Welcome everybody. This is my current desk setup. I'm about to tear apart and change. And so today's video will be specifically about audio. I do have aspirations long term to start providing full desk solutions, you know, in the house and the garage or, you know, mainly the house, I guess. Uh, I, I just feel like there's, there's, there's quite a bit of desk related, computer related, you know, ultimate desk tour sets up online. Uh, but we're missing a lot of stuff. I always end up with a much different setup than these videos that I end up watching. Uh, and so I think that maybe I can provide you some value as, as you think through this. Now, if you're not an audio person, you, know, you might want to just turn this video off because you're going to get real angry at some of the costs. I, I'm not, my intent here is not to share with you the cost of things to show off. I really don't have any need to do that. Uh, but. I do want to share with you the cost of things so you have a frame of reference and these systems for audio at your computer are a bit ridiculous. I, I understand that, but I really value a great audio experience. I use this computer every single day for multiple hours a day. Uh, same thing with my computer at my house, my, my desk setup. Uh, so I'm either at my desk at my house or I'm at my desk here uh, quite often. And so to me, having a great audio experience combined with you know the computing ability, the ability to not have a computer that's being choked by editing or something like that, uh, it's important to me. And so um, I'm willing to invest quite a bit of my hard-earned resources toward this uh, because of how much I use it. Same thing with cell phone. Every time the new iPhone comes out, I get a new one. Um, I want it to be fresh. I use this thing all day, every day. It goes everywhere I go. Uh, and so there's a few things in life that I'm really willing to invest uh, extra over and above what you know is probably you know certainly necessary. I guess there's a lot of things in my life that I do that, but this is my job. So you know, cut me some slack. Take it easy on me. So here's the current desk setup. So this is the Apple Pro display. Um, I certainly, I don't think I would buy this again. It's really nice. Um, this is the uh, the anti-glare version. What do they call this one? I forget what they what they call the glass. Uh, it actually works really well in here because of how well lit this is. Um, I tend to prefer the. It, it, it kind of mutes the resolution a bit. Uh, let's see what I got on screen here. Let me probably close my emails for you. Um, but this, this display is nice for my fixed setup. This is not a standing um, or a, a desk that will change height. And so having the ability to use the fancy Apple you know, $1,000 stand gives me the ability to get it at the right height for when I'm standing or when I'm sitting. This is a, a steel case chair. Uh, I forget the model. We'll look it up and uh, put the model in, uh, in the description here so you'll be able to kind of look up all this stuff. Uh, but generally when I'm using the computer, I'll bring the display down. The camera is the Logitech camera that's designed specifically for this. And so what I'll generally do if I'm on camera, I'll bring my seat up to height that way. And I'll try to bring like the zoom display here so it doesn't look like I'm looking down when I'm, when I'm doing some sort of video conference. Uh, and then I'll just use this onboard mic. My other desk setups, I always do a microphone and then I find myself very rarely using that microphone. Um, especially for zoom calls and stuff like that. I mean, especially what the laptops, like the new M2 MacBook Pro has like a three-way microphone system that there's no reason for me to do like separate microphone setups for, for the level of recording that I'm generally doing on, on zoom calls and stuff like that. So here I have a Intel base. So this is the last of the Intel Macs. Uh, so I have this MacBook Pro here. I'll probably replace that at some point. Uh, and that's set up on a Rain Design, uh, what do they call this? Rain Design M Tower. Uh, and so I have, uh, and then I have two, um, two Thunderbolt or two USB-C connections, one going to the display and then one going uh, directly to the, um, to the was it Joe Joe Tunheim uh, shit audio uh, audio interface? So, in this video is about the audio system, and so what I have done for several years now is bought a powered tower, a powered studio monitor, uh, and then I would use some sort of audio interface. Uh, and so what I've been using for years has been the Apollo. This is the Solo, which is a newer. Uh, cheaper version. I think this one's like six or seven hundred dollars. Uh, but I, for a while, I had to use the uh, the Apollo Twin X, which is around a thousand bucks. The problem with these devices, 
This is a, you know, this is for like, you know, recording guitar, recording vocals. Um, it's for installing different, um, you know, different recording equipment software, uh, so that you can, you know, you can do, you know, you, you do art, you know, do, you know, you record music. Uh, and so it has a lot of computing power and a lot of capability that is not necessary. I just need to be able to turn the volume up and down. Uh, and then at my desk at my house, I'm also using it for the microphone input. But really for this setup, I don't have a, a separate microphone, so I just need some sort of device to be able to turn the volume up and down uh, to give the audio output via USB from my Mac to the device and into my speakers. Uh, and so that's been a problem because the software in this is really freaking clunky. It's the one thing that chokes the Mac. Like oftentimes there's just all kinds of bugs. They don't seem to support the software as well as, as we'd like. And so there's all kinds of issues uh, with this thing. It's just annoyed the crap out of me. It turns off and turns on. It makes all kinds of clicking noise and stuff like that. So if you need one of these, I have a couple of them. I'll sell them to you cheap. It's, it's sitting in my drawer here that I don't use anymore. So somebody had made a suggestion, I forget who it was, but one of, one of you guys probably watching this video made the suggestion of looking at, uh, it's S-C-H-I-I-T, I believe it's a German, I think it's a German manufacturer of, they make amplifiers and other things. So this is, I broke this down, so I have the model number for you. This is the um, Shit Audio uh, uh, Joan J-O-T-U-N-H-E-I-M, Joan Tunheim 2 with the ES9028 DAC. So it has the, the ES9028 DAC is what gets you your USB input. So that way I can connect directly to my Mac and then it'll show up directly in my audio devices. So if we go here and we go to sound, where is it? Sound up here. Blow this up here so you can see it. And then you'll see immediately the, as soon as you plug it in, this is what's great. I don't have to install some sophisticated software. I don't have to um, have it you know, always searching and spinning. I don't have it turning off and on and sometimes having to like reset the, uh, the audio interface, unplug it, plug it back in. This thing, every single time I plug my computer in, every single time I turn it on, it automatically senses and it remembers my latest you know, device. Uh, and so this $500 DAC um, is giving me the capability to connect to, to the Dynaudio speakers. The other added benefit is that this device, the output, is a TRS type connector. So you need to buy special TRS to XLR, you know, either adapters or cables that have TRS on one end and XLR on the other that are not super easy to find. Megami makes them, a few other companies, but they're not like readily available and you have to pay, you know, a couple hundred dollars to get the right cables to make that thing work. Um, I'm sure you could find some, but it's, it's not readily available and something you have to order. And several times I'd ordered like two meter cables and I needed them to be three meter, but then I had to buy four. And so it, it creates, you know, a bit of problems that this doesn't have. This has USB out directly. So MacBook Pro, Thunderbolt, or actually this is a USB-C input. So USB-C to the USB-C input here, and then I go XLR out. I'm gonna tear this all apart for you so you'll be able to see how it works. So I'm going XLR out, and I can go directly into my studio monitors. So these speakers here, these are Dynaudio LYD5s. It's a, uh, it's a, you know, it's a studio monitor that has an amplifier built in. Uh, the amplifier built in is, uh, I believe it's, um, well, let's look at the you know, Upset's Garage site. I've forgotten the, uh, the measurements on these. So LYDs, LYD5s. Um, these are sold in singles. They're 500 bucks a piece, so it's $1,000 a pair, 998 a pair. And let's see, our specifications was, yeah, 50 watts for the, for the high frequency and 50 watts for the low frequency. So there's a Class D built-in amplifier um, where you're getting, you know, 50-50, 50-50. Uh, and then each speaker has some controls in the back uh, where you can set it up. I run them at dark mode. Um, and I'll, I'll show you how I have it set up here in a second when we take this thing apart. But here's the one problem. So in here, I don't know if you can hear it, the air conditioning, you know, the ducting, we can hear 
the you know the air conditioning running you can also hear the fan for the 200 terabyte server we have in the attic there's always people walking in and out you can hear the 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 the, the parking lot out here um shoot you can hear the darn birds chirping so you can't hear the hiss of and i never even knew that they were doing this but some people turn turn me on to this this idea that if i put my ear up next to this even with no um, no input, even if I, as long as the speakers are plugged in and the amplifier's active, the LYDs have a, have, a, uh, have a hiss that's inaudible in any room with any kind of sound, with the exception of if you have a dedicated office where it's quiet, your kids are at school, and there's nobody making any noise, you'll, and if you're sitting here directly with the two speakers close to you, you'll be able to hear it. Um, so it's never bothered me in here, so I'm not replacing this system for that. I just want to test out some other options for people um, to you know, eliminate that, that potential you know, pitfall for some people that have a really quiet room. Uh, and so I'm guessing as soon as you give these a signal, that hiss is probably there still. And so I'm gonna, we're going to find out if the, if the regular amplifier will, if you can hear it audibly through the speakers, which I suspect you probably still will be able to, but maybe a little bit, a little bit less than the, these, these are providing, a little bit less hiss. So this system is MacBook Pro, the audio interface, XLR cables are then running to my ridiculous subwoofer, which I should have no business having, but this is a sub 18S. It's a $1,800 subwoofer with dual eight inch woofers, or dual nine inch woofers, high excursion nine inch woofers, um, certainly not necessary. You'd probably be better served doing like an SB1000 Pro from SVS or maybe the SB, um, uh, the SVS Micro, a Micro 3000 would be a better complement to this setup. But for me, I've, you know, I love Dyn Audio, and I have the resources, and you know, if I buy these at cost, so I put the ridiculous subwoofer in here. Certainly not necessary. I'm using like 10% of what it, what it, what it's capable of, uh, but it is really nice to have, and it's a nice little footrest. What I do is I take my my shoes off here, so I don't damage my speaker, and I sit here like this, and it's nice and comfy. So, you can hate me if you want, but you would do it too if you were me. So. XLR runs out of the audio interface into the subwoofer and then two XLRs out of the subwoofer into the speakers. And then the speakers are decoupled from the desk and angled up toward the listening position with these isoacoustics. Aperta uh, will be an isoacoustics. We are an isoacoustics dealer now. We have them in stock. Uh, we should be launching this in the next few days. So if you are watching this video at some point, you know, a couple of weeks in the future, um, or if you want them now, just hit me up and we have them. It is always confusing trying to buy them on like weird Amazon sites and stuff like that. They're priced the same everywhere. Um, and so um, we'll make sure you get the right ones. I've bought the wrong sizes many times. They make, they make three different types, three different sizes. Uh, there's ones of different heights. There's different, all different options. And so you wanna make sure you get the right one. I'll, I'll help, you, help you make sure you do that. So this current setup, I added it up because I knew you'd ask, uh, is $1,000 for speakers, $200 for the stands, uh, $500 for the uh, audio interface, uh, $1,800 for the subwoofer, $120 for the two meter XLRs, and then $250 for the pair of uh, four meter XLRs. I'm running a lot higher end XLRs than I probably need to here, but, um, but, but you know, zero year, 300 bucks in cables. Uh, so this grand total, this system is $3,865, you know, excluding the computer, you know, just for the audio part. Now, I went in and said, what if I did these studio monitors? I still wanted to do something similar to this, but a bit more reasonable. Um, I could knock about 1500 bucks off, 1500 to, to a T here. Same speakers, same stands, same interface. Do an SVS um, SB1000, the 1000 series sealed subwoofer uh, would be my choice, would be uh, 600 bucks or, instead, of, um, instead of 1700. Uh, and then um, your cables would go down a little bit in price. So you'd be 2,300 uh, bucks we, if we went down in, you know, in subwoofer, basically. We changed the subwoofer up a bit. Uh, so that, that, would, that would change the, the pricing quite a bit. You could, you know, so I have $1,500 of fluff in this system that I, that, I, um, that I spent. So now we're gonna take this out and we're gonna put in a, well, we would call this an active speaker pair system with a digital analog converter. So this is just a preamp. 
So we're going to go from a, 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 an active version where I have a passive preamp feeding a signal to speakers that have an amplifier built in. And we're going to go to a what we would call a passive amplified system where we have a separate digital analog converting amplifier from NAD. Uh, and then we're going to be powering with that amplifier some passive speakers, speakers that don't have an amplifier built in. And I'm going to show you two different versions of it. So let's pull this apart and then I'll talk about pricing and setup of our, of our next version of this. I figured it'd be, you know, it'll make the video long and boring to some of you, but many of you who are interested in this kind of stuff will want to see how this all, how the sauce is made. So we'll, we'll you know, make the whole video for you. And my intention is to start selling full desk setups. This is a Sonic MSS Plus array that I've set up here. I think it stinks as we did quite a bit of cable management. That's the other funny thing. I see all these dudes making, making these videos and the freaking cables are like a disaster. You know, especially if you have a standing desk without a frame like this behind it. So take a look at the speaker and how this is configured. So you have power. Let's just disconnect our laptop and get it out of the way so you can see better. I can show you this better. And so we have power and we have an XLR connection. And so this is going to change and that we're going to go to speaker wire and no power cable. So the speaker is going to change quite a bit. And then see these Dynaudio speakers have some setting uh, options. Uh, I guess this system here is for sale, so let me know. Hit, hit me up and I'll sell it to you at a sweet deal. Um, but you have your power on off. Um, these I have set the base extension set to zero hertz. You should probably listen to it at, um, at plus 10. Um, so it shifts a little bit more base extension at lower volumes. Um, but because I do crank this system occasionally, um, I do run it at zero. Um, you'd want to run it at negative 10 hertz if you're a high volume listener all the time. Uh, and then I like the speakers. I like speakers to be as smooth as possible. And so they have a bright, neutral, and dark mode. I run it in dark. Uh, and then I run it in the wall mode because it's so close to the wall. You know, so there, there's a little crossover option there for you. So let's take these speakers out. So again, we're splitting hairs on the, on the, the noise this, this is making. So I don't want to over um, sell the fact that these are making some noise. It's minimal, but it is noticeable. Again, if you have a dead quiet room, it's probably going to annoy you. And so you may want to consider this other option of system that we're, we're going to be setting up here. We're going to reuse these stands. So these stands are the 6.1 inch by 7.5 inch size stands from Isoacoustics. So any, any, any PC, any Mac, um, you just need a USB connection. Well, it's not that you need a USB connection. It's that your, you know, generally, you know, your PC might, but I guess a Mac, but generally you don't have like optical output to be using like regular audio equipment. And so that's where this becomes clunky is that if you want to come out USB-C or Thunderbolt into, into a device like this, so you take a look. So I'm running a Thunderbolt connection from my laptop's output into the digital analog converter device. So because I want to be able to control, you know, I want to be able to take the you know, audio directly out of my, at high, high quality, out of my, out of my Mac or out of my PC into the, into the digital analog converter, there just aren't a lot of options that have USB-C or USB in. Most of them will have optical in, they'll have RCA in, they may even have HDMI in, but we don't have any of that. We could get HDMI out of this with a, with a dongle, but we're not doing surround sound. We're just doing stereo, stereo audio here. So that's why you order this device with that extra module so that I can go USB-C in. Because otherwise your inputs are normal, you know, either XLR or RCA in. What are you going to do with that? You can't, you can't get that out of a computer without some sort of crazy adapter or if you have some you know, some PC with some crazy sound card or something like that. But most of us, you know, that are using a Mac, a much simpler setup, you're not going to have that option. So I won't need this any longer because I'm going to be going traditional USB. And I happen to have this here because I had a different setup in the past. 
um, but you're going to need for the for the uh, NAD that we're about to put in here. You're going to need the traditional. This is like uh, what is this type uh, type B or something like that? I forget what they call this type of connection. It's a printer cable, and this is a Forest Audio Quest. This is probably like 80 bucks or something like that. So we will need that type of connection for our uh, and for our NAD or you need some sort of adapter. All right, so this is my monitor cable out. So I'm gonna need to cut some of these off and kind of clean this up here. I intend to leave this set up. So let's talk about our other equipment. So here, this is the device I'm talking about. This is a traditional stereo type um, DAC or, or you know, hybrid amplifier um, where um, this is the amp and preamp in one box. Uh, and the key is, is that it has USB in, computer in. Like even the Blue Sound node would be great because you can control volume that way. But the Blue Sound node doesn't have USB in. You know, it doesn't have, it only has optical in. Uh, and again, most, you know, Macs don't have optical out, so it doesn't, doesn't help me. Uh, and so this, we're gonna go computer in, and I'll show you in a second. I tested it out quickly uh, the other day. It, um, briefly the other day, it, um, it immediately recognizes there's no software install, there's no spinning hourglass, there's no sort of problems. It works really well. And then I get a volume control. Okay, so I've got speaker wire. You don't need this speaker wire. This is Velux. These are, I think this is like 200 bucks here. So you could just get some regular, we, we sell it's 80 cents a foot, just some regular white CI rated, uh, you know, 12 gauge uh, speaker wire. I'm gonna need to convert because my subwoofer has XLR in only, and this has RCA out only uh, for the subwoofer connection, sub out. Where is the sub out? Yeah, pre out sub right here. Uh, it actually has two two subwoofer outs. Um, you could you could call it pre out or sub out. So we're going to convert the RCA to XLR for that connection. Goofy little remote we're not going to use. And then I'm going to try two different speakers. High end Evokes. These would be a step above the LYDs. These LYD speakers. Um, these are more closely akin to the uh, the Emit line from Dynaudio, so the entry level line. Uh, these would be a little bit closer to the uh, core series uh, studio monitors as far as the drivers they use and the quality. This is the smallest version they make. So these are Evoke 10s, uh, which is probably gonna be a little bulky for the desk. We'll see how it looks. Uh, and then I'm gonna put in a much more economical version, which I'm really interested to see this, the, if I can detect a, a huge difference. These are um, clearly not the same craftsmanship, uh, but these are PSB P3s. These are $300 a pair. Uh, and again, notice the regular speakers, so they're gonna have a regular, you know, regular um, a speaker terminal inputs. There's no amplifier built in, but I think this is gonna be a great setup for the desk. 300 bucks a pair. 1700 a pair, so, so pretty big difference. Now there's Dynaudio Emit, which I think are 900 a pair, could be, you know, could be something you'd consider, uh, would be more comparable to these. Um, or um, there's also a P5 version of these for 500 bucks, so there's some graduation, there's some steps that we can have that, to graduate. This device is 900 bucks. So it is 400 bucks more than the um, than the shit audio um, interface because it is an, an amplified device. All right, so let's take this over and let's figure out where this thing's gonna go. This is one thing I don't love. Should I lay it on its side? It's quite a bit bigger. I think it needs to go. My setup, that's not quite as pretty. Let me grab my speaker and just kind of kind of set this in place here. So we're gonna have a single XLR connection go down to the subwoofer. Right now we have multiples. We're gonna get rid of our USB-C cable in favor of our USB-A, I guess. It's not A, it's like B, I think. But it is USB-C 2. USB printer printer style. So these power cables are going to come out. So we're going to eliminate some cabling in favor of speaker wires, which will be a little bit easier to manage. 
So imagine you have a stand-up desk and you got all these wires, you can't hide it. So I have a channel back here that I've hid this in, hidden it in. And so imagine you have a stand-up desk, you don't have quite that capability to hide wires. So this is a XLR to RCA adapter that I'm using. We have these in the store. We'll have all this stuff in the store. I haven't put the uh, NAD in the store yet because I'm not 100% sure if I like it. We need to use it, test it out. So actually, I guess we are gaining a wire because we have speaker wire and, and that extra subwoofer connection that I didn't have before. Okay, so that'll go out like that. We'll make that look pretty clean. This will come up and tuck in here. Looks cool. I got the high gloss white. Evokes come in high gloss white, high gloss black. Um, they come in walnut and they come in blonde wood. XLR, male to female. So that gets us our XLR connection. So this is the left speaker. <clears throat> speakers are left and right as you look at them, not out, not look at you. So look at the speakers to the right, and then. That'll be good. So, subwoofer goes to a single XLR, and then what I'll do, I'll change the crossover on this. The sub 18S has the DSP for the studio monitors, not for these. Uh, so, it doesn't have like an auto DSP mode. So, just for reference, this is the NAD. D3045, 60 watts per channel. Let's go to specs. These speakers are four ohms. 60 watts, both channels driven. 0.005% total harmonic distortion. Dynamic power, four ohms up to 150 watts when necessary, you know, when needed. Supports 24 bit uh, up to 300, 384 kilohertz. So the quality should be super legit. So let's play this copyright free business. And I can't stop thinking about you. Let my heart start spinning when I'm with you. It's true. I never felt this way. When you walked out the door. Whisper quiet, not a peep. Let's see here. Let's put these in position. Let's do the old, uh, the old finger test. So it needs to go to the right here. So we have equal distance left to right. I think I could probably do something better here with this. Plus two dB. Studio monitors are great, but man, 100%. And this isn't, this is probably at like 240 kilobits per second. Like it's probably 16 bit at best. That's awesome. So 
with this setup in its current form, you know, excluding the computer and all that, so you're $16.99 for the speakers of Oak 10s and Gloss. They're the same price in all, all colors. Isoacoustics are 200 bucks. The NAD is 900. The subwoofer is 1800. Um, XLR to RCA is 12 bucks. Um, one um, two meter XLR cable, which is um, 59 bucks, 60 bucks. So I'm gonna take 60 bucks off of that. Um, now I put the fancy speaker cables in, but if we did just regular cut the length wire, it'd be nine bucks worth of wire, six feet of each, and bananas were 29 bucks. So yeah, it takes 60 bucks off. So it's 4,707, 4,710 bucks for this setup. Shoot. So somehow I gain $900 because of the speakers. The speakers are more expensive. So that's a roughly $5,000 system. Now, what you could do, and I'm gonna do this in a second here, I'm not gonna pull the subwoofer out, but um, you could uh, do something like, do like the P3s I'm gonna install. So you go from $1,699 to $300. So $1,700 to $300, bucks. so that's $1,400 difference right there. You could go from a sub 18S to like an SB1000 Pro. So go from $1,800 sub to a $600 sub. So that's $1,200 there. Um, and you'd need the same connection. So you could get this down to about $2,100 um, if, you were, um, if you wanted a subwoofer with a pair of speakers. Now, take the subwoofer out. So for $1,500, you could do a really crazy system. Um, I'll, I'll actually disconnect the subwoofer in a second here. I'm interested to see what that sounds like. So I'm gonna swap these speakers for the P3s, which are 300 bucks, and see, see how that goes. It might be a much more practical system that 900 bucks for this, a pair of $300 speakers, skip the subwoofer. Uh, well, the speakers are gonna play pretty darn full range, so let's swap these Dynaudios with the P3s and see how that looks. <laughs> So clearly these stands are a little too big for these little baby speakers, but so that would make me spend the extra 200 bucks and get the P5s, but no subwoofer on. It's, these speakers are remarkable. I mean, this is all you need. I mean, a pair of these and this thing with your Mac is incredible. You could skip the subwoofer. It's playing down to 40 Hertz. Plenty of output. I mean, rarely gonna listen this loud. Incredible. You start with that, 300 bucks, skip the stands, just put them on your freaking table, or make a little wooden table if you wanted to. Um, so 300 bucks for those, 900 bucks for this, so you're, you know, 1200 bucks, still a lot of money. The other thing you could consider, if you skip this, and you just went headphone out, you could go headphone out into like a set of AM3s that are 550 bucks, that, that would be a nice setup. Um, so the AM3s are the same as these, just with, a, you know, with, with an amplifier built in. So you could skip all this stuff and just go, go with a, uh, you know, just a, the eighth inch connect and a headphone connection. So go headphone out of your, your Mac into your speakers. The other advantage of that is you'd be able to control the volume from here. Man, that's incredible. This does have a EQ, so if I wanted to, um, I'd rather do the EQ in the subwoofer, uh, but if I hit this bass button, I could set it up to be, you know, high pass or low, so high pass, you know, 120 hertz up to the speakers, 120 hertz down, so I could change the high pass fitting or set section. There's no question that the, you know, the $4,000 system is better than the $1,200 system. No question, $5,000 system, but I'm telling you, this this versus like doing some like plug-in clips or plug-in you know Samsung you know computer speakers is like insanely different. 
and it's this guy, this guy here, and I'm not even listening to high-res music. If I play some high-res stuff, it'd be pretty incredible. That's the ticket there. Hope this doesn't trigger you guys too much, but I think it's freaking awesome. Take my phone, park my phone right here. That's pretty, man. That's real pretty. You just chill. Watch myself on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, so that's a, uh, it's a $5,000 system for your computer. So let's see, what would this total setup be? Man, the laptop, that was like 5,200 back in the day. So 55 grand, six grand, so that's 11. Plus five is 16. Plus, I think this is like this, this setup here. So countertop, this is probably another, I wanna say these are like 400 bucks, 300 bucks. This is probably a thousand. No, this is probably closer to 1500. So there's two grand, another let's say 500 bucks for the top. So 2,500 bucks there. Say you're at 18.5, so say 19,000 bucks for this exact setup. That's too much. So you wouldn't want to do this. You know, some things you'd want to kind of be a little smarter about. You know, I, 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 mean, I do this for a living, so like, you know, I, it, but you know, some of you that if you really value this kind of thing, it might be worthwhile to do a similar setup. I mean, you could, I mean, if you buy an uplift desk, an uplift desk is gonna cost more than this thing does. I think, like with the top, I think I'm underestimating. I think this cabinet is a lot of money because it's, you know, it's got an eight drawer system. So I think that cabinet, yeah, I think that cabinet's about 1500. But if you do like an uplift with a wooden top, I mean, you're looking at, oh, I forgot about the chair, shoot. Yeah, the chair's another two grand. I think this chair maybe was like 1800 bucks or something like that. So you're 20,000 bucks, dang it. Maybe you wanna scale back the speakers a bit. This monitor is stupid, like you wouldn't buy this monitor. You'd buy the, two, you'd buy the new version of the Thunderbolt monitors, which are like 1700 bucks. So you also probably wouldn't have a laptop that's 5,000 bucks. I, I always have to buy like the loaded up laptop because um, editing, so so your laptop's two grand, your monitor's 1800 bucks. So there's 10 grand right there, so. So actually this, this setup, yeah, if you were doing this practically, I mean, you could do a setup, a really awesome setup for like 5,000 bucks or less, you know, depending on how much, how much you value audio. So if you had like a $2,000 version of the audio, you could even swap these out for a mitts and save a thousand bucks. Uh, but the plan is to have different progressive steps in desk setups, whether we do a garage-like desk setup like this, or we do desk setups like what we have in, in, at, my, at my house, or in Helen, or what we have here in the, in the, um, the, the Arn studio for the, the guys to the Arn office area. Uh, so there's a bunch of different versions. So, you know, I'm a year or so away from putting together full, complete systems with the proper wiring management and everything you would need to do and sort of teaching people, setting, show, showing you how to set it up and getting you all the right zip ties and all that stuff. Uh, but that's the goal. And this is what all this fumbling around and building. I think this is probably like my 15th different desk that I've had in the last, you know, 10 years or so. Uh, so I've been playing with these different setups and the key is there's no wiring. You don't see any wiring anywhere other than just where it's terminated. Um, I've got functions, so I've got some room on my desk here to, everybody's always stacking stuff up here, but I've got a nice functional setup that I can do standing pretty easily um, or sitting by, you know, moving the monitor down. I can run Zoom meetings. I can listen to music. I can listen to music critically if I wanted to. Uh, it's really a pretty nice setup. So anyway, I wanted to share you uh, another long format of what I'm playing with. Uh, and I'll let you know on how this auto standby and stuff like that works on this particular device. But uh, the sound on this, I can clearly tell the sound on this is pretty freaking incredible. 
So I'm going to listen to some other stuff, and I'll be sure to update you as time goes on. But uh, hit me up, Matt, at ObsessedGarage.com. If you need some help, sign your desk. I can source you most of the stuff you need for the desk uh, and get you you know, on the right track with cables and wire ties and wire management and all that kind of stuff. And um, I can certainly help you figure that stuff out. Anyway, thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. I get it. I get it. That's all I can say. It's pretty sweet, though. If you ever come by and visit, I'll play some music for you. See you on the next one.